Hi guys, okay, this is part three of the forging press build. Oh, forging press. Um, unfortunately, my brother come along today and obviously needed to grind some hinges. That's him in the background. So I have to do it this way just for the most part of the video. Here I'm just drilling and tapping out the back of the slider to fit some grease nipples. So this should make it a bit more easy to run back and to along the, the frame. I don't think it's necessary, but it's just something to help it. Obviously I'm only doing it on the back because obviously the heat and the uh, scale from forging is most likely to get caught up in the front end of it. So, I mean, like I say, it's just there just to act as a help with the wear. Not that it's going to wear anytime soon, but for what it takes, it may as well do it. I just drilled them out of five, tapped them to M6, and obviously just wound them in, as you can see on the video. Okay, here you can see I'm grinding all the plates for the base of the press. And the reason for that is I'm using a 180 amp MIG welder. I think it was 0.8 mil wire. So obviously I needed to make sure I got plenty of a penetration with the welds. So by putting a bevel grind on either side, and then obviously running a multi-pass at the welder's full capacity, just a better chance of the welds holding. I mean, they seem to do fairly well. So, as you can see later on in the videos, you'll see how they turned out. Okay, I'll get back to the video now. Okay, the run is made up. Um, it's all fully welded now. Pin's still free floating in there, so that's pretty good. And the multi passes all over, so in the bottom, which you restricted how far you can get the torch the inside. Well, multi passes top and bottom on these. So, an 180 amp welder, but that should be pretty sufficient. Did a good grind on either side. Uh, so, yes, tacked on there. Underneath, put the tacks. At the bottom end. I've also fitted a pair of grease nipples on the back. That's probably not necessary, but it'll just help make a bit more free moving. Let's track him back into. I've only put it on the back, obviously, because everything's going to be uh, you have scale and the heat on the front end of it. Like I say, it might not need it. I've seen some people use brass, like a brass shim, to allow for, like, um, so it's a bit more fluid when it's moving. I've also dot punched, because obviously these are sandwiched in between, but if I ever need to take it apart, it'll be welded in. So you can separate this to remove the runner. So I've dot punched each one of these, in correlation to which one it is. Obviously, one, two, three, and four, because it's threaded all the way through. So when you put them back together, there's no misalignment with the bolts or anything. So that should make that a bit, make a bit more sense as well. I think once it's in, I'll probably trim this bolt down to size and drill and tap either side and just have a washer and a, a bolt either side to hold it in place. Because obviously the force is only downwards. Uh, there's nothing really side to side. Okay, I'm going to start putting the base together now and then fully weld the frame up so it's not far off finished right i'll see you in a bit guys Okay, everyone, um, I haven't done an awful lot of filming today because it's mostly been just grinding and welding. 
Uh, I've got a short bit of it, like. But this is where he's up to now. He's pretty much finished. Other than I've got a couple of pieces I want to add. Might possibly add a flat plate to the top of this, just to tie that together. Um, and then obviously I've made these, which is 10 mil B50, which I might insert in here, just to continue the strength of the box and sit them on there, maybe like at a bit of an angle. Can't see that very well. So if you think this, the force is obviously coming down, hitting that and wanting to peel that way, the most direction that way. So we're having it joined here and here. It just makes this whole bottom piece of one solid block. Um, I mean, I'm sure I'll take it anyway. The amount of material that is there. So with the runners now fully working, it's just quite heavy. But hell. Obviously, you can see the pins moving nice and freely after and fully welded up. Obviously you've seen why I've done that before, just so you don't cross thread the bolts when you come to refit it. So for the bottom, I tied these plates in here either side, stepped them out a bit to get a nice, like a V for the welding up, like a root pass. And then decided to step these in, these ones in 10 mil either side, so you can get a nice fillet weld there. And also with the pressure of this forcing down, it just keeps. You can see from there, this part, which is obviously going to be taking a lot of the um, the force, and this part here, almost matching. I'm debating whether to put a piece of solid bar, something like a 40 mil solid bar, inside here. But then I also thought, if I can lift this up, let me off. I can maybe get the mag drill. Drill a hole there. So instead of having the tool in for when I want to punch hot eyes, for say axe heads, I can just obviously put the uh, punch tool on the, the press and just send it straight through. And then when you've got your normal tool, then that'll slide in. But I know it's something I can think of later. So yeah, other than that, I've got to put it on the stand, test it, everything again. And if I'm happy with it, pipe it up correctly and paint it. And then there's a lot of finished touches, like with the pins. So yeah, there you go.